All right, check, check, we're on, yep, thank you. All right, let me check my watch, make sure I don't go over. Okay, 11.26, you know, I crossed over, I didn't realize this. You have an hour time difference, right? Chattanooga, is it? You cross over, something like that? You go for an hour, so I kept going back and forth. I wouldn't believe anybody to tell me the time. Look on the news, they tell me one time, ask the person at the front desk, they tell me a different time, the pastor tell me a different time, so checked last night, I'm glad you did that. I had already adjusted it, but... As Jason, uh, Jason has mentioned and Pastor has mentioned, uh, come from New York State. Uh, don't hold that against me, okay? I know, uh, you go back to the, you know, the north and the south when all that stuff happened, but we're all God's family, amen? Amen. So let's, uh, let's pray, and then I'll tell you, a little bit, um, tell you a little bit more about myself before we get into it. I don't want to spend too much time on myself. I'll be here all week anyway, so just give you a brief introduction so you don't think it's just some, you know, some guy from New York in a gray suit. But let's pray. Father, thank you again, in Jesus' name, for this opportunity to be uh, with the family of God. There truly is nothing like the house of God, Father. And so we we bless your name as we already have. We continue to today. Bless this message, this word that you've prepared for the people. Use me as a conduit of grace, mercy, and truth. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. And all of God's house said, Amen. amen. So, My name, I'm going to tell you this. I'll tell you my full name, and then I'm going to tell you what to call me during the week, okay? Because you won't get my full name right. My name is actually Domenico Danesi. That's how you'd say it in Italian. Don't try it, okay? Because people say Domenico, they'll say everything. When I went to college at Brockport, I realized if I was going to go by that, that the teacher was either going to mispronounce it or they're going to call me Dominic. So just call me Dominic, okay? Got that? The last name is not Denise, one of the brothers came in today and said, were you that guy with the ball cap there last night? I said, yes, I was. He said, oh, man, you had a first name as a man and a last name as a girl. I said, no, that's not it. My last name is not Denise. It's Denise, okay? As I say in English, I said Denise, but so Dominic Denise, okay? There's, there's some, I have some information out there about Rescue and Revive Ministries. We are a mobile gospel ministry, both uh, locally, nationally, and internationally. Who remembers Aaron Hilliard from last year? Yep, him and I do a crusade together. We're very good friends. He has six children. I have six children. So we share a lot of the same struggles when we struggle, a lot of the same laughs when we laugh, so on and so forth. In fact, I watched his kids for a few days when he was working a fireworks tent up uh, up in New York, and he did pretty well with that. The Lord blessed him. So um, I'm excited to be here. Uh, Yes, I did come solo. My wife was excited for a while. We were considering it, and my oldest had just turned 16, but considering the way they're getting along, we didn't quite feel 100% comfortable leaving alone for five days. So I was telling Pastor... A night before I came, I, I've been Ubering a lot because like the Jason's Lovins band, everybody's been affected by COVID-19. We know that, right? So for me, I have a small safety training business. That's how I make my tent, so to speak, provide for my family. That got deeply affected by this, so I had to Uber a lot. So I was Ubering, and I came home late last, uh, the night before I came here, about one in the morning. So I opened up the Bible, Exodus chapter 33. Moses is talking to the Lord as a friend. we we'll talk to his friend. And Moses says, hey, if I found grace in your sight, who are you going to send with me? And he says, my presence will go with you. And that's when I was at peace. Okay, you want me to do this alone? It's going to be me and you, Jesus. So that's what it was for a 14-hour trip down, over 800 miles. I'm glad to be here. I'm really uh, blessed and very impressed. My biggest regret thus far is I didn't bring my golf clubs. I knew I should have put my golf clubs. I was telling Jason, I should have put them in. Who knows that the Holy Spirit could tell you to do something like that? He can. I didn't because I was scared my wife might say something like, oh, you're going there for ministry. Why are you bringing golf clubs? And sure enough, golf tomorrow. So I got to borrow somebody else's, anybody who wants to volunteer. So let's get into the word of God now. I'll be happy to talk to you all week. Judges, Judges chapter 7. You're familiar with this passage. I was telling pastor, there's a, a few different messages that I had had prepared. But sometimes, as God often does to me, he won't give it to me to the last minute which one he wants me to speak at that moment. And so this morning is really where he kind of clarified what he wants me to deliver to you by his grace. And it's in Judges, the Old Testament, Judges chapter 7. You're familiar with Gideon. If you're familiar with Gideon, say amen, please. You've heard of Gideon. Gideon's very well known. He's a judge. He was one of the 13 judges when Israel was in a place where it was a time of judges. And we all know that the time of judges was much, very similar to now. Everyone was doing what's right in their own eyes. It was a time of lawlessness. It was a time where they were saying, defund the police. It was a time they're saying, wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Do this, don't do that. There was information and there was misinformation. There's nothing new under the sun. History's repeating itself right now. But I'm going to tell you this. A judge was not a pastor. He wasn't a politician. He was a warrior. He was a leader, and that's what we need right now. We need leaders 
to lead the church of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you that right now. So with that being said, that introduction, let's get into the word. Chapter 7. Then Jerubal, who was Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early, and they pitched beside the well of Herod, getting ready to go to battle against the Midianites. So that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Morah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee, that are with you, are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Now let me just pause there for a minute. Told you a little bit. The Midianites have the people, the Israelites, in bondage. So much bondage that they're finding little caves to hide in to get some rest. Sounds like a quarantine, doesn't it? I mean, they would come through and they'd take all their cattle, they'd take all their crops, just being bullies, oppressing them. Just like when the Israelites were in Egypt. It's not a good time. And remember, this is the, the, the Israelites are on a treadmill, a spiritual treadmill. They do what's right, then they do what's wrong. God punishes them, sends consequences. They cry out to him. He has mercy because he's full of mercy and he delivers them. And they keep going through this process through all the time of the judges. So Gideon gets his men ready. And God says, there's too many of them. Now listen to what he said in verse 2. Too many for me, for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Battle's over already. Folks, the battle's already over. What are you scared? What are you worried about? The best is yet to come. Listen, you can't, you cannot sing I'll fly away if you don't believe that. You know what that's like? It's like putting a mask on. You're hiding something. And by the way, I'm not against you wearing a mask. Don't get offended if you are. I understand. I'm not saying be stupid. I believe some of you, I was talking with a nice young lady over at the gas station next to the hotel. And she was telling me about her, uh, her mother, her grandmother is 80 years old, and she hasn't been coming to church. I, I understand that. I'm not trying to be insensitive. I get that. But folks, the writing's on the wall, just like it was here in this time of the judges. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. He uses confusion. And that brings division. How pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in unity, Psalm 133. There's a commanded blessing that was mentioned last night at the walk. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices of what's going on here. And when you peel back the layers of this, this whole craziness circulating around us, I'm going to tell you this right now, and I'm going to speak prophetically because it's from the word of God. This thing that's going on at its bottom root level is an attack against the church of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you that right now. If You don't have to believe me, but I'm telling you I know it is. When you look at history, just like the judges, who were the persecuted? The church. Who's ever heard of Mao Zedong from China? Look up the history on Mao Zedong. He's the man that introduced the communist Marxist regime to China. Tried to bring in his ideology, and it worked, by the way. And they suffered a a tremendous famine that killed 15 to 20 million people. And all these pandering pastors bowed their knee to him. This is not a time to be a pandering pastor at all. You're going to bow your knee, you bow it to Jesus Christ, that's it. You don't bow it to a politician. You don't bow it to Caesar. You don't bow it to government. You bow it to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. And that's it. So it goes on. The Lord says, I'm going to give it to you, the Midianites, into their hands. Why? Lest Israel vaunt themselves. They'll think they did it against me, saying, I've done this. And we still have that problem today. We know that. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. That's still true today. Still true today. Now we have a proclamation and a test coming. Instructions are given given to Gideon. You've got to trust your leadership. God speaks to Moses. God now speaks to Gideon. And he says, Now therefore, verse 3, chapter 7, Go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, 
Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people 22,000, there remained 10,000. Now, I'm really not good at math, and I mean that. I'm terrible at it. But that's about 70%. 70% of the warriors, of the soldiers, backed out. Because they were fearful. That means fear hadn't completely crept in yet, but it was planted there. The others were just afraid. It had already taken root. What were they scared of? It's a question I asked this morning. What were they scared of? Same thing you and I are scared of at times. You're scared of losing your life. I'll fly away. Will you? Do you believe that? Then why are you scared? Why are you scared? Some are fearful, some are, some are afraid. And I tell you right now, up in the Northeast, it's a lot more fear than I see here. And there's a lot of division. People calling, tattletaling. A pastor and I were talking about this. Don't tell me there aren't parallels to Mao Zedong's regime. Don't tell me there aren't parallels to Nazi Germany. There are right now. Why? Because it's an attack against the Church of Jesus Christ. And while all those Jews were getting on boxcar, you know, we had pandering pastors. Church leaders that bowed their knee to a government rather than a God. Don't do it. Do not do it. I'm telling you right now, do not do it. You see some taking a stand, but like John MacArthur, he won, by the way, in court. Praise God for that. You could clap for that. Praise God for that. You know why? Because he said, I bow my knee to Jesus Christ and him alone. How about that police officer, if you watch the news? A black police officer, by the way, said, I will not bow my knee only to Jesus Christ, not to a skin color. That's the type of men and women we need right now in the battle. If you're fearful, if you're afraid, God told Gideon, tell him to go away. You're either going to go away or you're going to be sent away. It's either the wheat or the chaff. You know that. This is a separating time. Well, you got a farm right across the street, don't you? So I don't have to tell you about winnowing, right? You take the winnowing fork and you toss up the wheat. Whatever has substance, right, that comes down. The shaft just gets blown away. It doesn't fly away. It gets blown away by every wind of doctrine, by every government mandate, by everything that you're told to do by somebody who's not of God. Sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is truth right here. His truth endures to all generations, he says. It will never change. Never. Into eternity. It will never change. Not one jot, not one tittle will be left undone. He says, I didn't come, Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law but to fulfill it. Why? Because you can't. If you're so worried about keeping the law, then you're probably not as concerned about loving the one that fulfilled it. And he goes on. 22,000 leave. Now he's left with 10,000. Verse 4, and the Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water. Here comes the test. First, there was a proclamation Now there's a test. Verse 4, and I will try or test them there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto you, this shall go with you, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto you, this shall not go, the same shall not go. I already mentioned you've got to trust your leaders because if you have a good godly leader, the Lord speaks to the leader and then he presents that to the people. So here comes the test. He's only got 10,000 men left. By the way, the Midianites were like grasshoppers, locusts. Probably millions of them. They had a right to be scared in their flesh. They had a right to be scared if they weren't trusting God. It's natural, but God's supernatural. Not by might, nor by power, but but by my spirit's faith, the Lord. So he brought down the people to the water, verse 5, and the Lord said to Gideon, Everyone that laps the water with his tongue as a dog laps, him shall you set by himself, set him apart. In the same way, or likewise, everyone that bows down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hands to their mouth, were 300 men. But the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees. 
to drink the water. And the Lord, verse 7, said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lapped, I will save you. And deliver the Midianites into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man unto his place. Again, I already mentioned to you, it wasn't good math. 300, 10,000, not a very big percentage left. 332,000, not quite even a tithe. That's how many are left to go in and battle. Do what God tells them to do. To trust their leader. To trust their God. 300. Well, what was the test? What was the test? The test was this. What are you more concerned about, your own life or others? Concerned about the kingdom? Or are you concerned about the earth? See, what I've noticed over time, and again, if you, I pray you don't get offended at this, but I'm just going to be very, I'm very truthful. I try to be truthful, but I try to infuse it with grace, so Lord, please give me grace. Well, I'm just going to tell you this. I've seen a lot of false converts in my days. I've seen a lot of masks, spiritually speaking. And that's not what's needed today. You won't last. If you have a spiritual mask on today, you're going to get exposed by the truth of God's word, by his spirit. Holy Spirit convicts of sin, righteousness, and judgment. God raises up those who are more concerned about the kingdom than their flesh. And 9,700 men were too concerned about getting their water, taking their eyes off the battle, indulging their flesh. You know, I told Pastor, <laughs> oh man, thank God my wife isn't with me. You know, last night at that, that was, a, who was there, by the way, last night at that walk? That was a really nice event. We have something like that up in Rochester, huge event. They raise all kinds of money for an organization called Compass Care. But you know that hot dog? I, I was a little hungry. That hot dog and Cheetos and stuff in there. So I ate that. And uh, the pastor's wife came by. And I, was t I knew I shouldn't have had another one. But I did. And as I was eating it, I don't know if the pastor was paying attention to me or not. But as I was eating it, I said, I'm not going to eat the chips and the cookie. But guess what? I ate the chips and the cookies, so I basically had two dinners. And again, if my wife was with me, I probably wouldn't have done that. Or I would have had to deal with the consequences if I did. But why? Because we're so concerned about our flesh. We're so concerned about us. We're so concerned about appeasing and satisfying our selfish desires. We're not setting our affections on things above. And then this morning, a little breakfast pass. I'm telling you, I'm just being truthful with you. I was on staff in my church as a children's pastor for five years. Never once did I eat breakfast in the morning. That's just what the Lord put on my heart to fast. But this morning when he told me the same thing, I had to go get that little two eggs and sausage thing, and I couldn't even enjoy it the way I wanted to because I wasn't supposed to eat it because God wanted to speak to me because he wanted me to know what the battle plan was and relay it to you. And today I'm telling you, this is the battle plan. God still raises up men and women, still raises up men and women that are not fearful. They're not afraid. They're more concerned about the things of the kingdom than they are of what's going on around them. And I'm telling you right now, if all you do is watch the news, every, you know, CNN has that constant coronavirus ticker on. I just want to turn the TV off. I was going to say smash it, but you probably want to sometimes. Because that gets in your mind and makes you fearful. And, and you can't think straight. And that's a tactic of the enemy. The prince of the power of the what? Air. Don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. You know, I'm going to be honest with you too about this. Coming down here. How are we doing with time, Pastor? Give me a thumbs up. I won't take too much longer. Coming down here, I'm going to tell you right now. New York State, uh, Governor Cuomo, Who's, who's heard of him before? Okay. I pray for him. I do. I'm telling you the truth. Give, give honor where honor's due. He opened up us by region. I was blessed, but I was surprised. He allowed the schools to reopen. I was surprised by that, so I'm thankful for that. My wife says, I'm not even going to give him that. All right. I do. My wife's a great lady, by the way. If you ever meet her, trust me. She's, she's a beautiful woman. I'm not trying to paint a bad picture because she's a wonderful woman, virtuous woman. But, you know, he, he has set some other rules. You can't go to this state, and you can't go to that state, and if you come back, you've got to quarantine for 14 days, and if you don't, what, what, is, what does the enemy use? He uses your weak points. Whatever you don't have enough of. If it's money, then he's going to make you fearful you won't have enough. If it's your job that is so important to you, he's going to make fearful you might lose it. If it's a relationship, well, you've got to do what he says or she says, or you might lose him or her. Here's what Jesus said. 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and everything else shall be added unto you. Jesus said where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. Your inward man, the one that flies away. Doesn't get blown away, flies away. Resurrected with Christ, raptured. Listen, you're gonna meet Jesus one way or the other. By death or rapture, you're gonna meet him. There's no in-betweens. This is a time, it's all in time. It's all in. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. He says, you're for me or you're against me. You gather or you scatter. There's no masking your identity in Jesus Christ. He knows you by name. He knows if you're in the Lamb's book of life, and he knows if you're not. I said this at the beginning. I said this not too long ago, a few moments ago. I've seen a lot of false converts. I have a table back there with some resources. One of them is a really good teaching resource by Ray Comfort. Probably, probably the best that I've heard. And I've listened to it many, many, many times. When I teach our evangelism and apologetics course, I use it as an independent study. And one thing he talks about is this. All right? And it's from Jesus, so I'll use Jesus' words. He says, you know a tree by its fruit. Jesus said this in the Sermon on the Mount. A good tree produces good fruit. A bad tree produces bad fruit. By your fruits, you shall know them. Not your suits, your your fruits. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, 22. And we have a tendency in the church... And there's a lot of well-intended pastors, preachers, missionaries, evangelists, fill in the blank, that invest a lot of their time and a lot of their energy and a lot of their resources into goats. They have no desire for the things of God. They drain you. They distract you. They're wearing a spiritual mask. So, well, how do you tell the difference? Time and truth go together. Whenever Jesus speaks of conversion, he uses horticulture. He uses agriculture. He uses seeds. He uses trees. He uses plants. All those things take time. You don't just, boop, put the seed in the ground, all of a sudden, corn. It doesn't work that way. Test the spirits to see that they're of God. That takes time to test. That takes time. This is all in time. Maybe you've come to Utenville Baptist for years. I don't know any of you yet. But you're not really converted. You don't know Jesus And by the way, you say, I've said a sinner's prayer. So what? You tell me one time in scripture where Jesus led somebody in a prayer. You tell me one time where they were led in saying some script to receive Jesus. Even Billy Graham himself said most of the people that he did that with probably weren't saved. I'm not saying a sinner's prayer can't. You're looking at somebody who was saved from a sinner's prayer. But I got to present this to you. The closest thing to a sinner's prayer we have in the Bible is this. God have mercy on me, a sinner. The closest thing we have. But we do know this. If you confess or agree with your mouth, you believe in your heart. Jesus Christ is Lord, you'll be saved. Saved from what? Saved from sin? Saved from self? Saved from death? Saved from hell? The real place? that needs to be talked about. No one likes to do it. I don't either. But it's real. If you really believe that, imagine. If you really believe there's a place of outer darkness and torment, flames of... If you really believe that, you'd have callus on your knees. We'd be sharing the good news with everybody we could. We'd be praying for them if we just got a little glimpse. Just like Paul. Paul said when he went up to the third, he said, I knew a man caught up to the third heaven. I saw things I couldn't talk about. I heard things I couldn't talk about. They were so glorious. Well, the opposite is true for hell. The real place that God made the devil and his angels, not for human beings, but because of your rebellion, because of my rebellion, because of the desires, the evil desires of the heart. That's where you will go if you don't believe upon the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The Lamb. 
full of grace and mercy, love, and truth. Sacrificially laying his life down. No man can take my life. I lay it down willingly. The lion, power, dominion, sovereign over all the earth. He's the lion and the lamb. And you either bow your knee to him now. Or you crawl in humiliation. And he says, depart from me, I never knew you. This is not a joke, this is not a game. Can you tell that I'm serious about this? Do you think I'd drive 800 miles to, to joke? Do you really? No. No. This is the real deal. It's all in time. No more games. No more games. Now listen, don't take that the wrong way. God is good, I told you. Whole family playing golf tomorrow. Jason Lovins, man, okay? But you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. You can't hide from God. David said, if I went to the pits of hell, you'd be there. If I made my bed there, you'd still be there. You can't run from God. And I know nothing, really nothing about this church other than I've spent a little bit of time with your pastor and met John yesterday and some other nice men and women. But I know nothing about the congregation. But I've preached in enough churches and I've been around the block enough times to know this. There might be one and even if it's not one, even if there's one, even if everybody was saved in here, then there's others in here right now. You know what you're doing? You're retreating out of fear. You're not in the battle anymore. You just come to church every week. Well, good for you, but you're not in the battle anymore. The other six days out of the week, or six and a half days out of the week, and I, and I mean that as an encouragement, a challenge to you. There's never been a greater time in history that the gospel of Jesus Christ needs to get out, if you really believe it. I mean, if you're really all in, if you really believe when Jesus speaks, he is the truth source, then now it's the time. And here's the wonderful thing. No matter how far you've drifted away, and I'll end with this, I'll give it back to the pastor. No matter how far you've drifted away, and I don't know what it might be. Could be a relationship. A, a wise pastor once said to me, I've never had more suicidal phone calls than after relationships. You know why that person has become your God? Let him go. Let her go. They're killing you. Let them go. Maybe it's a financial situation. Maybe it's a measure of faith. Maybe it's something that you know you're supposed to do. You just don't have the faith to believe it. It's time to step out of the boat. God's fingerprint. You want to see his fingerprints? They're fingerprints of faith. See, you know what those... All those uh, men missed out on, other than the 300, they missed out on God's work. They missed out on the miracles of when the battle came and there was 100 on this side and 100 Gideon's men on this side and 100 on this side, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, foreshadow, equal parts of God, the triune God that we worship. And they said, the sword of the Lord and Gideon, and they blew their trumpets they had their little lanterns. What happened? All those Midianites turned on each other. What, what was the sound like? I don't know. Well, I know God gave them the victory. And God wants to give you the victory today. That's the truth. And you have an opportunity. I don't know you, and you don't know me. But I'll tell you this. God sent me here to tell you what was told today from his word. Not my words. From his word. And so if you need to come up today, and again, I'm going to give it back to the pastor if you need to come up today for prayer, for whatever it might be, I'll tell you this, I won't share it with anybody. I won't share it with my wife when I get home. Well, she doesn't know you anyway, but I won't share it with her. It'll be between, now listen, I've ministered in place, one of my favorite places in Rochester is the Open Door Mission, homeless shelter. Been going there for 12 years. There's men in there, they've murdered people, they've committed theft, everything. I don't tell anybody. You know why? God can forgive them. Christ has laid his life down to forgive you. And without a doubt, there's some of you in here today, I know it, according to God's Holy Spirit, you need to get right with God. You need to repent. You need to ask for forgiveness. You need to confess your bitterness. There's a lot of things going on here today. You need to do it. It's between you and God. And just like Gideon, he uses human vessels. So pastor, if you want to come up, I'll make myself available.